Hello everybody, Just, uh, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, somebody encouraged me to slow down when I'm speaking. Uh, I guess uh, an hour study is going to be a little longer than an hour because they said I was uh, speaking too fast, so maybe I am. I covered this a little bit in a previous recent study, but I'm going to cover it again. The color or word red in the Bible. Now, in the Hebrew, it is a an adjective, something that describes. And uh, let's see, it is from, well, if you take a look at it, in Strong's Concordance, it is the Hebrew root word of 132. And if you take a look at it, it comes from the Hebrew, Strong's Hebrew root word, 119, which is Adam. And it talks about being ruddy, as in the Irish have a ruddy complexion. Uh, women take what they call rouge and they put it on their face. Uh, they call it blush. Um, there's only really one group of people in this world that uh, are ruddy and they don't come from Africa. All right, so, but uh, it has reference to red, ruddy, being able to blush, uh, reddish hair, or the complexion. So that's what this red has reference to. In Genesis 25, and verse 25, it talked about Esau, and this is what it said. And the first, and it's talking about the child that came out, and the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. All right? Now, if you go to Malachi chapter 1, God said he hated Esau. And that's probably because Esau hated God. And in Genesis 25 and verse 30, Jacob traded Esau his birthright for a bowl of probably lentils. So let's read. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Okay, so that's where red comes from in the Bible. Now, if you look, there's like 50-something times when the word red appears in the Bible. Most of the time, it talks about the Red Sea. So, you know, Israel crossed the Red Sea under Moses. So... I guess, uh, well, Esau was red, and he sold his birthright, the blessing of God, for a bowl of probably red lentils. Is there anything um, good about red? Let's take a look. Now, Esau, whom God hated, was associated with the color red. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. And we read the following. Verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. Verse 3. 
And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, a great red dragon. Red dragon, people, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and didst catch them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven, war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Ah, so those stars that the dragon's tail drew out were figures of speech for angels, right? And the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan. So this dragon is called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So, doesn't sound like the color red is anything good. You know, it's associated with Esau, somebody that God hates, and the great red dragon, the old serpent, called the devil and Satan. So red really doesn't ring a bell as being something nice. I mean, the Red Sea was an obstacle for Israel to cross. God parted the sea. They walked across on dry land. Pharaoh's army tried to do the same, and they were drowned, if you remember the story. I hope you do. So, Guess what, people? The flags of communism are all red. The flag of Nazi Germany was red. Um, the red star on communist ships and airplanes was a red star. Um, dragons, red dragons. You know, there's a reason why communists were called Reds. Isn't that the truth? So, communism murdered millions, millions of Christians in Russia. And, um, you know, there's a reason. They're called Reds. Matter of fact, in the um, encyclopedia of the... Um, well, it's, it starts with a, a J, and it rhymes with the word news. Uh, their encyclopedia, it says that Esau is in modern uh, jewelry. You can leave off the uh, re. But uh, they admit that Esau is in, you know, in there with the tribe. And, uh, matter of fact, King Herod was, according to Josephus, a historian, Jewish historian, says that uh, King Herod's family was of Esau. Oh, I got something else that's interesting, too. Now, I don't know if you know it, but uh, the Kenites, K-E-N-I-T-E-S, uh, sometimes, that's kind of a way they spelled Cainites. But uh, they were tied in with Cain and Canaan. Go to First Chronicles 2 and verse 55. And the families of the scribes, who were the scribes? They were the copyists of the words of the Bible, the scriptures. Now, they didn't have printing presses and paper, so what they did was 
they would copy the words, the scriptures on animal skins and a, a papyra a type of paper type thing. So they were the ones that copied the scriptures. And the families of the scribes, which dwelt at Jabez, the Tirathites, the Shimeathites, and such a thites, these are the Kenites. Ah, the scribes. These are the Kenites that came out of Hemoth, the father of the house of Rechab. So there was a lot of intermixing uh, between Israel and the Can Kenites and the Canaanites and the Canaanites and the Sinites and the Perizzites and the Jebusites and the Amalekites. Uh, just, you know. But this tells you that the scribes were tied in with the Kenites. In Matthew 5 and verse 20, Jesus said, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, scribe is where they get the word scribble. And matter of fact, in some of the Latin-based languages, uh, scriben, I think that's German, it means actually to write. Um, so Jesus didn't have a lot of nice things to say about the scribes. In Matthew 23, 13, But woe unto you, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer or allow, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Verse 14, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold, or twice, ye make him twofold more the child of hell, than yourselves. Uh, get the idea? I mean, who was it that always opposed Christ? It was the scribes. It was the Pharisees. All, of, almost always. That I can tell. So, the Pharisees, I'm sure, were intermarried with the scribes also. Although not all of them, because... Some of them converted and became Christians. So, all right. Um, but uh, just remember something. That uh, red tied in with Esau. Esau is tied in with jewelry and um, communism. And communism is red. And millions of Christians died under communism. So, all right, well, Chaplain Bob Walker signing off. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.